I'm going to walk through something new I'm working on that I call the third plane of innovative teaching. It still has some rough edges. I start off with this cube. It has three dimensions, you know, X, Y, and Z axis. Imagine this axis is all the students or end users that you could possibly use with your product. If you take a slice in one particular direction out of this cube, you're left with a narrow sliver of all the students that you could have that could use your product. It could be a product that's one student, it could be a small group, it could be whole group, it could be 30 students, it could be a massively multiplayer product, but there is a dimension of the amount of students that might use your product. Another axis on this diagram is the teacher access. You slice the cube in another direction, and what kind of teacher support do you need to help facilitate the learning? Could be one teacher, could be multiple teachers in a lab, it could be no teacher, and maybe a number of your products that you're working on don't require the assistance of a teacher or a parent, and you're hoping the end goal will result in some learning outcome. But generally speaking, for this argument, I say, well, let's just imagine there is at least one teacher involved. Now, if we slice on the remaining axis of this cube, I define it as what is the method, the teaching method, the method in which the information may get through to the student. And I pull that out to the side and I rotate a little bit to drill down on this particular plane. You could be anywhere on this dimension, A to B. And of the different kinds of teaching that you could use, you could be a formal educator. You, this could be informal learning. This could be teacher-directed. It could be student-directed. This could be a tight instructional path, or it could be a teacher that is facilitating the class of students that are empowering themselves and learning without the teacher. You could have real-time teaching in a class. You could have on-demand teaching, like Khan Academy. You could do the traditional in-class thing, or more recent terms, the flipped classroom where you come prepared to discuss what you learned. In the case of using a game for learning, you may play the game at home and talk about the learning in the classroom setting. There's certainly in-class, there's distance, and these are just some examples. There are many others, I say, extrinsic and extr intrinsic motivation for learning. The point that I'm getting at is there are many different ways to approach teaching, but from this plane, you can pick and choose unique ways and combine them together. For example, you could say, this is teacher-directed in a formal setting on demand. What would that look like? That could be a teacher who is a tutor through a tablet, maybe Skype. I've seen uh, other products where a teacher could be on demand 24-7, and all you need to do is open up the app, enter in your credit card, and lo and behold, you've got a teacher right there. That is a market approach to education. Another one could be just picking randomly. It could be informal learning in real time with an extrinsic motivation. This could be a learning game. You're collecting points, you're collecting coins. The extrinsic motivation is the game mechanic for communicating the information. Oh, and notice I, I did remove the teacher for that one. The game, theoretically, is the teacher. Randomize it again. You could get something that is uh, student-directed. It is a facilitation where it may be a group of students working together to empower each other to learn from each other in a classroom setting. Could say could be a lab. The concept I'm trying to convey is when you slice this cube and think about all the possibilities for how you could get learning content to a child, there are a lot of levers that you can move and mix up and change in combinations that I think is the, really about the innovation of the web and apps and digital instruction, or digital learning, I should say. And I think what's fabulous when I watch all your pitches is that I could see oh yeah, you know, you've got this, this, and this element in your product, and that's how you're going to market, and that's a way to sell your product, you know, as the uniqueness that this product can deliver to an end user from a learning perspective. So this is something, I, again, a new thing I've been noodling with for a while, trying to explain the different approaches that you can engage an end user with learning content in ways that could be very exciting, very innovative, that nobody's done before.